Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Harry Miller, and as a young, dumb, second year undergrad student in mechanical engineering, I'm going to try to talk about Christopher Nolan's newest film, Tenet. I'd like to preface this with a quote by a great thinker of the 20th century, C.S. Lewis. He says that the future of all things is the least like eternity. For the future is the most temporal part of time, for the past is frozen and no longer flows, and the present is all lit up with eternal rays. And so here Lewis makes a clear distinction between the three phases of time, but what if there was a way to consider the present to where three phases of time could instead be one sort of phase of time? And so when looking at like a standard continuum of time chronology, left to right, past to future, what if we just simply say that today is what was, what will be, and that the present simultaneously is both the genesis and the terminus of all of our movements and vectors through space and time, and that in an infinitesimally small moment, we become infinitely massive, something really remarkable, that the present is everything. It is everything that has happened, everything that will happen, all at one point, which we all get to share together. And so, how do we analyze past, and how do we analyze the future? Well, for this, I make reference to Brian Greene, a great physicist who researches string theories, and teaches at Columbia University. He makes a point in his most recent book, Until the End of Time, he says that the mathematical equations treat unfolding toward the future or the past in exactly the same way. Furthermore, the laws have steadfastly adhered to a complete insensitivity to what we humans call future and what we call past. So how do we analyze the past and future if the math that defines this very universe is completely indifferent to it? Well. Entropy can only increase, and a word, order tends towards disorder. And Green makes use of a great metaphor and says that if you have a basket of 100 coins, to flip it and get 100 heads on the first try is extremely unfathomably unlikely. But make note that fate is not finality, but mere probability. It is indeed most likely to get 50 heads and 50 tails on 100 shapes, yet, though extremely unlikely, it is not impossible to get 100 heads either. So in the words of T.E. Lawrence, nothing is written. And though against great odds, man still holds the complete capacity to fight for his fate and to place his will against that of the universe, so that all that is written is what he decides to write for himself. Therefore, entropy decreasing can still obey the natural laws of physics, and though it is nearly impossible, it is not impossible entirely. This is what Tenet is comprised around, is that entropy, the very process by which the past becomes the future, is reversed. Of course, to us, this is science fiction, movie magic, and perhaps to even suggest it seriously, would be to insult the greatest physicists we have and to be a complete disregard for the second law of thermodynamics. Or, perhaps one day, by either human genius or divine intervention, to manipulate entropy will be as easy as manipulating clay into pottery. And that maybe one day, to travel five steps back in space will be just as easy to travel five years back in time. This was a brief explanation and discussion on tenet, time, and entropy. Hopefully you had a good time. Thank you.